For the past uh, few weeks, we've been hearing from uh, the books of kings, uh, so-called the historical books. We've heard about the events leading up to the Babylonian captivity. Around the same time were the prophets. So today, we're going to start for the next couple of months, actually, hearing from various prophets, all this week from the prophet Amos. He could be considered the sort of the civil rights activist. Uh, if there was a, a protest going on, he was probably part of it. His reading today, actually both readings and even the psalm today have kind of a little bit of a harsh tone. Amos always has strong words, especially for the wealthy who just uh, often enjoy their wealth but at the same time ignore the people who are not wealthy and struggling right around them. The Gospel, uh, now we've left behind the uh, Sermon on the Mount. Uh, we're going to start with miracle stories tomorrow, but for today uh, the issue is discipleship a harsh kind of response from Jesus today, too. So we begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Of course, we open ourselves to his Spirit again, present in this place. Lord Jesus, you have shown us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. You have given us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. You are the Good Shepherd, leading us in, into everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. And let us pray. In our Mass intention, we're remembering uh, Richard Brasket today. Look upon us, O God, creator and ruler of all things, and that we may feel the working of your mercy, grant that we may serve you with all our heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Amos. Thus says the Lord, for three crimes of Israel, and for four, I will not revoke my word, because they sell the just man for silver and the poor man for a pair of sandals. They trample the heads of the weak into the dust of the earth and force the lowly out of the way. Son and father go to the same prostitute, profaning my holy name. Upon garments taken in pledge, they recline beside my altar and the wine of those who have been fined, they drink in the house of their God. Yes, it was I, yet it was I who destroyed the Amorites before them, who were as tall as the cedars and as strong as the oak trees. I destroyed their fruit above and their roots be beneath. It was I who brought you up from the land of Egypt and led you through the desert for 40 years to occupy the land of the Amorites. Beware, I will crush you into the ground as a wagon crushes when laden and she with sheaves. Flight shall perish from the swift, and the strong man shall not retain his strength. The warrior shall not save his life, nor the bowman change stand his ground. The swift of foot shall not escape, nor the horseman save his life. And the most stout-hearted of warriors shall flee naked on the day, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Remember this, you who never think of God. Remember this, you who never think of God. Why do you recite my statutes and profess my covenant with your mouth, though you hate discipline and cast my words behind you? Remember this, you who never think of God. When you see a thief, you keep pace with him, and with adulterers you throw in your lot. To your mouth you give free rein for evil, you harness your tongue to deceit. Remember this, you who never think of God. You sit speaking against your brother, against your mother's son, you spread rumors. 
When you do these things, shall I be deaf to it? Or do you think that I am like yourself? I will correct you by drawing them up before your eyes. Remember this, you who never think of God. Consider this, you who forget God, lest I rend you and there be no one to rescue you. He that offers praise has a sacrifice glorifies me. And let him that goes the right way, I will show the salvation of God. Remember this, you who never think of God. Alleluia, alleluia. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. It's a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus saw a crowd around him, he gave orders to cross to the other shore. A scribe approached and said to him, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus answered him, Foxes have dens and birds of the sky have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to rest his head. Another of his disciples said to him, Lord, let me go first and bury my father. But Jesus answered him, Follow me and let the dead bury their dead. The Gospel of the Lord. So, uncharacteristically kind of strong words from Jesus today, especially on the issue of discipleship. Uh, Jesus just finished. We spent the better part of three weeks in the three chapters of the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, now we're going to move on to some miracle stories in the, in the narrative. The wisdom of the Sermon on the Mount and the other actions of Jesus, I think, are already well known. He's attracting crowds of people who want to be near him, some like the woman with uh, the hemorrhaging uh, in yesterday's gospel, want to be so close that they can touch him or touch his garment. Uh, they're looking for some kind of hope and healing. So Jesus attracts crowds. The scribe today uh, says that he wants to be a disciple. Uh, Jesus warns him that the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. It's not exactly clear what the scribe is, is thinking and what, what uh, he is presuming uh, it means to be a disciple. Many uh, teachers at the time had disciples. Maybe they would live in the same uh, house. Uh, they'd uh, spend a lot of time with the teacher, listening to them, sitting at their feet, uh, uh, hearing them, you know, expound on any number of, of topics. Maybe he thinks being a disciple of Jesus is going to be sort of like that, uh, that he uh, is obviously full of wisdom, that uh, I'd like to just sit and, and listen. We know, of course, discipleship requires something much more than that. Uh, the, the rhythm of the sacraments, including the one we're celebrating right this minute, they, they all revolve around the dying and the rising of Jesus. Uh, this is a reality for him, and it's a reality for every disciple. In a way, every time we celebrate the seven sacraments, uh, we are rehearsing this dynamic of dying and rising. The scribe doesn't seem to get that. Uh, a scribe would be, you know, a, a, a plum sort of disciple to have. Most people at the time couldn't read or write, but scribes, of course, that's their job. So to have an educated scribe wanting to be a disciple would seem like a, a feather in the cap for Jesus. But he warns him that discipleship is going to be a demanding thing. It's not a cakewalk to be a disciple of Jesus. It means following him. It's going to lead to Jerusalem, to uh, his death on the cross. All of these things are ahead for him, and Jesus is aware of it. 
the scribe is not. He thinks this is just a, a classroom. He's signing up for a, a philosophy uh, discussion or something like that. To be a disciple requires so much more. You and I are familiar, of course, uh, from the moment of our baptism and from our faith experience. We know what it means and how demanding it is to be a disciple. Jesus surely calls people, uh, invites them to the experience. But uh, a harsh response today to this scribe and the other person wanting to follow. Jesus surely, though, calls each of us to follow him to be disciples here and now. I invite you to stand with me then as we are aware of our need for God's grace and help to take up the radical call every day. So we do think of our family and friends, neighbors, members of the parish here, most especially those who are facing trouble of any kind today. We pray to the Lord. These days we're continuing to pray for peace in our world, especially for the end of this violence in Ukraine and in Israel. We pray to the Lord. Loving God, you called each of us to be disciples. We ask for your grace and we ask all of our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It'll become for us the bread of life. And blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It'll become our spiritual drink. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to Almighty God. Look with favor on our supplications, O Lord, and in your kindness accept these your servants' offerings, that what each has offered to the honor of your name may serve the salvation of all through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him with great goodness you formed it anew. So it is right that all creation serves you, all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore we too extol you with all the angels, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them. They may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. 
together with Francis, our Pope, Bernard, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, especially today we're remembering uh, Richard Brasket, and all who've died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Of course, every disciple down through the ages has had the radical prayer Jesus himself taught. We have it, and so we can say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let's turn to one another then and offer some sign of God's peace. Lamb of God. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
and let us pray. May the working of this heavenly gift, O Lord, take possession of our minds and bodies so that its effects and not our own desires may always prevail in us through Christ our Lord. Amen. Next Monday, there will not be 915 Mass. It's going to be that Totus Tuus uh, retreat day. So I think Mass is at like 11 or 11.30. So I'll be back in two weeks from today. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you today, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace.